Hey guys, it's Carla. I'm here in the Bon Appetit Test Kitchen today for a very secret conversation about Chris Morocco. We want to test Chris's super taster capabilities. This is Gordon Ramsay's Beef Wellington. Chris has two days to replicate this exact dish. He will be able to smell it, he will be able to touch it, and he'll be able to taste it, but he may not look at it to try to figure out what it is. At the end of the second day of cooking, I will come back and taste his final creation, and I'll be the judge. There's a Yorkshire pudding aroma to this. It's like a toasty, roasty, earthy, slightly kind of sweet aroma. Like a kind of like savory thing that's encased in some kind of very rich pastry. Do I feel like there's anything on top? I feel like no. Oh, flaky salt, you sly girl. That pastry is not shattering as I go through it. You know, you have this like roughly circular piece of meat. It just like kind of makes sense to me that this would be beef. There seems to be some other thing in this layer in here. It feels kind of like ham or something. I can't tell if the meat itself is flavoring standard ham or if that is actually kind of in like the realm of prosciutto or something. I'm gonna like get into this meat situation filet mignon. There's this layer of stuff. There's something really intensely earthy about that layer. I think we're gonna go ahead and call that mushroom. Let's assume there's like a little garlic and thyme in there. Oh god. I'm getting like white wine, onion, maybe it's red wine, butter, maybe it's shallot. There's like some like real like snap and acid. It's possible that it was adjusted on the back end with like just a touch of vinegar. How is this actually constructed? Was this a raw piece of meat simply placed into this pastry case and then baked? Or did this get a quick sear in a skillet? If I had to guess like right now, I'd say this is like Beef Wellington. But what is Beef Wellington? Like I can't friggin' remember what Beef Wellington is. It's just like a name that I know. So, okay, there's like the pastry element, puff pastry, the meat, that's filet, the ham, that's vexing me for sure. But I think I might get like a couple of options. Mushrooms, stock, white wine, red wine, thyme, garlic, butter, shallot. I'm gonna need flaky salt, a couple of eggs for an egg wash. I feel pretty good about that. So I've got my list and we are gonna take this and go shopping. I'm looking for filet mignon center cut. I'm going by size because I'm thinking of like that specific plate that I know from the test kitchen and I want to kind of match it pretty exactly, you know, to the width. It's got to be that meat. It was like, it was lean, it was super tender. That's beautiful. I'm just getting some regular ham because at the end of the day, I think this will get close in terms of texture. Could I have a half pound, medium thin slice of the prosciutto di Parma? One click less, Literally. one click less, a little thinner. Thank you. Cool, thanks. All right, eggs for our egg wash, butter. So I'm getting just a whole bunch of cremini mushrooms here. They just have like a very earthy, neutral flavor. I want some thyme. I'm gonna get some beef broth and we are gonna get puff pastry. This is the stuff. got back from the supermarket. Yeah, I think we're ready to hit this. So I'm just gonna trim some of these up. Oh boy, man down. I'm not into this. We're gonna go by hand. I feel like the mushroom needs to have like a little bit of texture to it. And that was just pretty upsetting, like how slimy that was getting. I just want it like really ultra fine.
we're not trying to put color on this. I just want to cook it out. Lots of liquid coming out here. I'm just doing a cracked clove of garlic and thyme. I feel like I was tasting thyme in the, in the duck cell. Let's assume there's like a little garlic and thyme in there. I gotta kind of hedge my bets a little bit here. I wanna get some garlic flavor in there, but I just, I don't think I want tons of it. So in mushroom duck cell, I feel like you more typically find like white wine. I feel like I tasted a little bit of that like brightness to it. So I just wanna cook this out. I'm gonna hit this with a little more salt, just a touch of pepper. I don't want it to be overwhelming. So tasty, so flavorful. Confidence in terms of flavor, high to very high. I'm gonna let this cool and I'm gonna get going with my little red wine reduction. I'm just gonna do one shallot. I'm not going for color on the shallots. I just wanna sweat them out, develop their sweetness. I'm gonna put in some red wine here. I'm getting like white wine, maybe it's red wine. While I'm cooking that out, I'm gonna check out my puff pastry. See, do I wanna go to here? I need some to cover the edges. I'm going to roll out the puff pastry for today. I'm not gonna sear off the meat in any way before putting it into our puff pastry package. I imagine the puff pastry shell, you know, is gonna need maybe like 30 minutes. I could be in a situation with that size, you know, roughly piece of filet that it's gonna then overcook while I'm waiting for the puff pastry to turn golden and cook through. Does that make sense? I felt like I tasted the flavors of what was going on around the beef, but I didn't taste anything other than perhaps salt and pepper on the meat. One thing that was really messing me up this morning was the order of the layers. All right, Brad, come here. I'm thinking puff, prosciutto, spread the duck cell right on the prosciutto after it's laid out on the puff. Beef roll. And then roll. beef rolly roll. Yeah, I like that. Would you that. ever put the duck cell against the puff and then put the ham on top of that and then the beef? I like the idea of the prosciutto being a little bit of a barrier. I mean, you want to control the moisture, moisture from the Moisture, saturation in the puff. I like that. Now you're using your noodle. And then what's the plan? You roll this bad boy up and then bake it off raw? I think so. No sear. I don't know. That's where I've been going back and forth. But anyway, we're gonna keep going and assemble this. I don't know, Brad seemed to be into the plan. We're going all in on prosciutto. I wanna get this pretty tight. I'm gonna trim a tiny bit. Kind of put like a little bit of a crimp on it. And then there was that distinct kind of nubbing edge to this. So this is gonna go into the fridge until very firm. I'm gonna do quick egg wash. This just helps the puff pastry pick up color. So this is going into 400 oven. Cool, I think we're gonna work on our sauce a little bit. This is my reduction of shallot, olive oil, and wine. I'm gonna adjust this with a little bit of our beef broth and see what that's doing flavor-wise. I need to taste some sort of beef flavor. Just a few drops of red wine vin. The tiniest bit of acidity. So I'm just gonna see where we're at now. Ugh. Got some obvious problems here. This ended up going, we're gonna call that like 38 to 40 minutes at 425. Part of what was tricky about tasting blindfolded this morning is I couldn't feel any obvious surface detail and I didn't feel any obvious scoring. Certainly did not see the frigging Grand Canyon in the one this morning. I can hopefully correct that by just docking so it's like able to have some moisture escape. I mean, flavor-wise, I feel okay about it. Can't quite tell about the ham. I, I feel like it's, it's giving me a similar level of like flavor and funk. I have some things to think about tonight. I used a little bit too much of that um, bone broth, which is kind of flattening out the flavor of the wine. I feel like I'm kind of like circling around it a little bit. Ready for the second tasting. Just trying to get a little bit of clarity on a few key points and I'm hoping this does it because frankly, if it doesn't, I'm not sure where that puts me.
Yeah, so this thing is like positively cute compared to that behemoth that I just pulled out of the oven. My cut of meat was one pound, seven ounce. And I think for the next one, I'm just gonna do a pound. I'm gonna lean on the idea that this is docked. I'm also gonna lean on the idea that this is a thinner coating of pastry than I used. The meat feels a little bit less done than this morning. It's mushroom around the meat. So then this, this is the big f***ing question, right? This is a cured meat product. Everything just feels like a little finer, a little tighter, a little smaller. The way it's shredding apart around the outer edge makes me feel like this potentially had an initial sear. If I did an initial sear on this piece of meat, then I could build the jus in that skillet on top of the fawn created by searing this meat. At the end of the day, like I don't think mine is like so different from this one. Feeling very confident about the meat, feel good about flavors, feeling much less good about the jus, feeling like there's a lot of different ways to get there. I'm somewhere between cognac and red wine, beef broth, no beef broth. I'm gonna have to do a few things tomorrow to try to get myself back to that place. I wanna call that like beef wellington, but like to have like prosciutto in there, that's messed up to me. It feels like old school kind of stodgy French cooking that's then like, you know, repurposed by the Brits and like, are they putting prosciutto in there? Like, I don't think so. I'm sure however close I might come, there's still gonna be differences and like, that's just cooking. Regarding the mushroom, you know, I'm not really changing anything from yesterday other than the fact that I'm just making more of it. At least I don't have to cook it blindfolded. Just gonna let this cool while I think about sauce. I'm gonna do some shallots. So I'm trying two different methods for building it, um, both starting with sweated shallots, but then adding brandy in one case and red wine in the other. seems like a pretty French thing to do to light stuff on fire. I'm just gonna put like a quarter cup of beef broth in there. So in this pot right now, I have shallot sweated out in olive oil, red wine reduced by about half, and I have just a splash of beef broth. This is shallot sweated in olive oil and then just deglazed with brandy. The cognac version is completely missing the fruit quality in the red wine version here. I'm gonna throw some red wine in on top of the cognac version. We're now gonna call this our cognac wine hybrid. This to me tastes the closest. Let's see where we end up. All right, we're gonna sear this piece of meat. I really don't wanna cook the meat through. All I'm trying to do right now is put a pretty light sear on this piece of meat. Just getting like a little bit of color on that fat, I think it's gonna help me flavor-wise. Okay, flavor's been developed a little bit. I'm gonna put some shallot in on top of this and build my sauce. Always good to add your alcohol off heat. Now I'm gonna do red wine. So we're gonna let this reduce by half, but I think we're ready to assemble package number two. After tasting it yesterday, I feel really good about the fact that we've got pastry, prosciutto, then mushroom, and then meat going in there. I'm not sure this is how I would necessarily do this, but this is what I felt like I was experiencing. So I'm gonna chill this. Size-wise, I think we're definitely looking a little better here. So again, I'm gonna egg wash it. The other thing that I'm doing today that I definitely didn't do yesterday is docking the pastry, which means to kind of prick it all over. It just helps the steam inside escape. Do I feel like there's anything on top? I feel like no. Oh, flaky salt. Into the oven. I'm not gonna check on it for 25 minutes. That'll be my first temp. All right, so everybody was screwing around, so we uh, ended up creeping up to 44 minutes here, but I turned the heat down um, from 425 to 375. Oh. 
So obviously the pastry split again, and it's a super bummer. There needs to be more aggressive slashes or docking on the pastry in order to allow more steam to escape. This is the second time I've had a seam open up. I think there's just too much steam inside trying to get out, forcing it open. Did the other one definitely, was it sealed over here? Because like, what if there were like steam edges over here and then it wouldn't have to affect, you wouldn't have to be like slashing the top. Is it like an end vent? Is that like a thing? I don't know, Does I'm not mad about that? that. Let's cut this thing open. Sorry, I gotta get this. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm just getting this for the gram. So again, going maybe even a touch thinner with the pastry. Otherwise, you know, I'm feeling pretty good about this. My producers inform me that I have two hours to get the next one in and out of the oven and ready to go for Carla to taste. So it all kind of all comes down to this. Going into the fridge, just want to cool that down, keep it next to Andy's weird old containers of stuff that he didn't deal with before he went to Mexico. I've been feeling pretty good about the pastry itself. Right now, I just try to make it a little bit thinner. I feel like size-wise, we are closer than we've ever been before. So I'm gonna get this in the freezer and then we're gonna go into the oven. This is our last chance really struggling with the fact that I didn't detect deep slashes in the original dish, so it's freaking me out a little bit. I'm gonna start by like very lightly scoring it. Worst case scenario is just that it looks like garbage and stuff leaks everywhere, but whatever happens in the oven with this thing, that's what I have to serve to Carla. So yeah, I'm just hoping this kind of works out. Anyway, sauce. I'm basically gonna use my sauce from earlier because I don't wanna take the time to make another one a quarter of a cup of the broth. Yesterday, I ended up adjusting mine with a little bit of red wine vinegar. It's possible that it was adjusted on the back end with like just a touch of vinegar. I don't know. I don't know if I need it here. Yesterday, I felt like I put a little bit too much butter in the sauce. So I'm just putting a small amount just to give a little bit more body. I think this is pretty close, so I think this is it. So I'm gonna get this off onto a rack. Final ingredients, if I could do it another time, I would do like very light scoring so you get more of this effect without opening it up to the mushroom mixture below. Overall, I mean, I think I'm at like 90%. Are you yeah, I'm ready. This is so exciting. Ah. Chris, Okay. I would like to present to you Gordon Ramsay's Beef Wellington. Oh, Gordo. <laughs> All right, I'd like to present you. I feel like we're getting Chris married. Chris Morocco's <laughs> Beef um, <gasps> Wellington. I wow. Guess. Very close. So, one of the first things I'm noticing is there's a size differential. So, I think the target, of course, is in grams, but it's a little less than a pound. Mm -hmm. and, and it looks like you went closer to a pound and a half. Yeah. The scoring, it's obviously much deeper. He just does a light surface scoring and yep. it's really decorative. Yes. Whereas I think you were connecting the scoring to the technical challenges, which is the cooking of the internal and mm -hmm. the external with getting the pastry right and yeah. not sogging out. Yeah, this is one that like, honestly, I'd be fascinated to, to take another crack at, you know, kind of knowing obviously what I know now. All right, let's get into it. Let's do it. You ready? Oh, very nice. You're medium rare rare. The mushroom here is a little bit finer. It feels like it was food processed, mm -hmm. which like when I did- Did you hand it, chop? I ended up hand chopping. And what kind of mushroom did you use? Cremini. Okay. I think we need to taste them. Yeah. You know? Into it. I need a refresher. Mm-hmm. Very beefy. Beefy. That was the one thing I was like, yeah. he's definitely gonna get that it's beef. Yeah. I'm gonna take my first bite of yours. It, cool. it did have very nice crispiness cutting through the pastry. I just wanna, I want you to know that. Thank you. Mmm, different, a little bit different. Lacks a little bit of the sweetness. The texture of the mushroom is totally different. I cooked mine with a mixture of olive oil and butter and then um, threw in thyme 
garlic and white wine uh, and salt. Oh. Mm -hmm. There's thyme leaves in Gordon's recipe, so they're finely blitzed in there. In there. So you don't know. Interesting. Um, and then there's no acidity. You use, you use white wine. I really thought I detected like a little brightness in there. Yeah. There were certain judgments I made as a cook where I was just like, I don't want mushroom paste ever. Sure. But should I have just like followed the spirit of the exercise and just made mushroom paste? I mean, Probably. you're oh. trying to match it exactly. Right. I know, but like yeah. you, gotta, know. you gotta resist. I know, you I know, said like it, there's there a good somehow. possibility that he might make a better version. Did you season and sear or did you just season so, and wrap? The first one I seasoned and just went right to wrap. The next one I seasoned and I seared. That is like correct, but not to cook, just to get. No, just to get a just little to bit get, of color. All right, let's taste the sauces. Okay. Visually, they're a little bit different. So the major difference between the two comes down to flavor development. He trims the filet yep. to make it nice and neat and actually uses those trimmings mm. to make the sauce. The other thing he does is he uses red wine vinegar. And there's also bay leaf and thyme. Yeah, I did wonder about an herb in there. Uh -huh. I don't get the bay at all. So shallot, yeah. cognac is a yeah. and the red wine vinegar, red wine. You had red wine. I had red wine, yeah, and, for sure. And a good stock. I couldn't have done any of this. So oh, let's just take on. a step back. <laughs> it tastes amazing. It looked incredible. So like, thank you for living up to my uh, um, thank you. expectations, which are generally that you're gonna be amazing. Oh, thanks. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Rest easy. You, too. you deserved it. The thing about tasting something blindfolded is that you stop trusting anything. You really have to rely on senses that you don't always let yourself lean on too hard. Had a couple small issues here. There's a size differential. Lacks a little bit of the sweetness. The texture of the mushroom is totally different. Yeah. Cognac is a But honestly, overall, I'm gonna call this a big victory and I'm ready for the next challenge. My new version of Beef Wellington retains the luxuriousness which made it brilliant in the first place. The most important part is to sear it. Salt, pepper, the fillet, is an olive oil. What's up with the mood lighting?